as a data scientist, you have to make projects. And when we say projects, it has something to do with making researches. And a research has something to do with following a step-by-step -step process because when we do not follow a step-by-step -step process, then our research would be distorted and the result would be that we could not come out with a very solid result. And when these results are not very solid, then our end users, which are our consumers, or even the internal stakeholders in the company would suffer. This is actually very difficult, especially when you are a beginner in data science. You don't still understand how to do the first step. And in most cases, the first step is really very difficult. Data is available. It can be anywhere or in, in some cases, it is just there in the company's database. And your only problem is that how you're going to start with the project, thinking the fact that data is there. So what is the first step in making a data science project? I know a lot of you would just go into or even jump into the step of analyzing things or just pull the data from your database without even understanding what could be or what is the first step in doing your data science project. And this is what we're going to talk about today. What is the first step in making your data science project? We have to understand this. We have to critically do this for us to be able to do the next steps until the end of our data science project so excellently. But before we continue, don't forget to click the subscribe button because we have a lot of lessons for you about data science. So we have mastering machine learning algorithm, the deep learning mathematics, the natural language processing, data science tips, and many more. So you can learn a lot from our insights and new lessons. So let's proceed. What is the first step in making a data science project? The first step that you always have to remember is that you need to first identify or create a very good case. When it is something to do with a the business, then we can call this one a business case. And what do we mean by a good case? So when we say a good case, it has something to do with what is the ultimate value that you can get out of this project. So for you to do this, you have to be clear of your question. You have to be very specific, not general of your end goal. So what is it that you want to achieve? So for example, when we're talking about a business case and we are dealing with customer behavior, don't just ask yourself, what is the trend of the customer? I think this kind of phrase or sentence is very general. And for you to be able to have a very clear business case, what you have to do is that you're going to specify what you want to achieve. So instead of asking what the general behavior of your customer is, the better thing to do is that you're going to ask your customer about a certain design of your product, say for example. So we have this product and the best thing to do is that you're going to ask the customer, how would you respond to the design of this product? So having this kind of question would make your case clearer and, and more specified. And now that you have already identified the kind of question or case as far as your client or customers are concerned, the next thing that you're going to do is that you're going to connect the benefits that your clients or your customers can derive to the benefit that your company or your organizations can benefit from. So you have to ask yourself, what is the added value of the result of this project can be given to the company? So going back to this kind of thing, and our question a while ago was that, what could be the response of the customer with respect to the design of this product? So as far as your organization is concerned, maybe it's something to do with how much the company can gain from the sales of the product. Or it could be what kind of design that the company can create in such a way that the cost for the production of this kind of product would be less and the gain of the company would be higher. So with respect to this kind of added value, a certain study can give to the company, it is best also to ask yourself what kind of information that you need. 
And so for example, when you already have in mind what kind of information that you can get using a certain algorithm, then the best question is that how are you going to use the information that a certain algorithm produced? So with respect to this kind of question, we always have to remember that each algorithm has its unique features and attributes that can also produce specific or certain data. So we have already said something about a specific value that a certain company or the company's clients or customers can derive from. And also we have mentioned about a certain information that a certain algorithm can be produced and how they are used to add value to your company and to your customers. But how are we going to shape them in our minds? How are we going to make discussions with our bosses, with our employees who are involved in a certain data science project? Are we going to consider a lot of things? Are we going to also think of some people as we go along with understanding and identifying a clear case of our data science project? The answer is yes. And we have to consider actually some things. And the first thing that we have to consider would be our users. And it's not simply users, but it has something to do with the end users because these end users dictate what kind of strategy, what kind of design, what kind of materials to be used for making the product. Or when we are not talking about a certain product, it has something to do with our services, be it a public company or a private company. And the question is this, how are we going to involve our end users? The result of our data science project can be very convincing if the end user's experience are taken into consideration because it is from their experience that we draw our information from that we understand the behavior, the trend, and even their sentiments. And talking about the end users, the person that we're going to ask or the person who is going to deal with their behavior would always be a person who is expert in the subject matter and that is the domain expert. These domain experts always have a lot of things about the end users. They know their perspectives. They know their behavior. They know how they would respond to a certain situation. They know how they react to a certain experience that is offered to them. Or integrating the, the response, the sentiments of the end users who are actually the ones who will use or enjoy the products or services. And these domain experts would give the juice to the discussion in the data science team because these people know exactly what to do and they know the taste of the end users. So with respect to this, it is always best to ask where is the need of the end user really lies. Because when we study a certain project whose outcome does not really meet the needs of the end users, then the project is not useful, it is not practical, and in short, it's just a waste of money and time. So a good data science case has something to do with the value that the end users can get from. And the next thing that we're going to consider is that whether or not machine learning artificial intelligence or even deep learning can really offer the best solution. I know that a lot of us are really enthralled when it comes to using the different techniques of data science. Maybe you would like to use AI, you would like to use machine learning or even a deep learning in dealing with data, data science project. I have been telling you about this one that not because it's machine learning technique, we're going to use it for a certain data science project. The case is not like that because we still have to assess the applicability of a certain technique. Artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning can never be used in all cases. In fact, they have their limitations. We have to remember that artificial intelligence is used when the data is too complex and it is too large for people to examine and analyze and synthesize to get insights out of it. So in short, when a simple task is at hand, there's no need to use artificial intelligence. You can just use simple tasks of data analytics. Another thing that AI is not applicable is when the data is unpredictable. So it has something to do with some situations wherein human experience and human intuition can be used. So in this case, we don't need to use artificial intelligence because it is just used when something is predictable and we can really see the different patterns using the different algorithms. 
Again, when it's not predictable, then AI can never be useful. Although it can give you some results, but the results would never be convincing. And also, when we say applicability, it has something to do with the cost. So when your data science project just demands cheaper ways of doing it, then why not use it when the result would still be the same? Let's say, for example, why not use Excel when your data science project can just be done using Excel, how to develop a very good data science case? The first thing is that you always have to involve your end users. So with respect to this, you also have to ask the help of domain experts. And the next thing you're going to remember is that you're going to examine the applicability and practicality of artificial intelligence, machine learning, or deep learning. So when you consider shaping and creating a very good case of your data science project, then the next steps would be easier because you already know, you already understand the environment surrounding your case. And it would be easier for you to pull what kind of metrics you're going to deal with and also it would be easier for you to identify what kind of data, what kind of attributes you're going to use for your modeling. So do you want to know more about my channel? Just click the card on your right screen and you can enjoy a lot of our data science learning resources. And here you can always learn and upskill for free.